Um, let me just. Do you guys hear dings all the time? Because no, oh, I I don't oh, okay. hear. Okay, that's good because I have um, teams going on at the same time, so it keeps giving me updates. Okay. So we had this discussion offline, and um, I think we came to the conclusion that the idea that we have uh, in stack data that is per hop versus in stack data that is end to end um, is not uh, you know that necessary um, because for me the in stack data is um, what you want close at hand. You want to be able to process it more quickly. Um, you want to um, have very specific functions that you, that you actually do. So the, um, in that case, um, pretty much every hop is expected to process the in-stack data. And there, there is a question of how do you make sure that um, every LSR in the path is able to process the data. Uh, but so we can do that by advertising in the IGP the capabilities of each node and then doing path computation that makes sure that uh, I, well, ideally, um, all the nodes along the path know how to process the in-stack data that you're inserting. So if you do it that way, um, essentially you're left with um, every node can process uh, the necessary bits um, and it is pretty much hop by hop and it consists of the data that is high priority and you want it close at hand as opposed to post stack data, which um, takes more effort to get to and potentially has uh, more um, processing when you get there. So for example, if you think about IOM, you might want to update several fields, uh, do some time stamping, do some various other things. <clears throat> um, so that might be a good candidate for putting in the post stack data. And you might also have the situation that the IOM is only necessary in certain po points. <clears throat> we had a little bit of a discussion um, in the design team. I don't know if it was last time or the time before where we talked about MIPS and MAPS and, you know, so it's uh, what we're talking about right now is <clears throat> either every node processes it or just the N nodes, the, ingre the egress processes um, data. Um, <clears throat> we may need a more granular thing than that uh, if you really want to go down the path of MIPS and MAPS. But um, you know, for now, I think that's that's a reasonable thing. But but that applies primarily to the post stack data where you have more effort to get to it and more processing potentially when you get there. Uh, for the in stack data, um, we just have everything be hop by hop. So from the scope discussion, I think um, uh, you know John and I's discussion uh, essentially um, that distinction of uh, hop by hop in stack data and and end to end in stack data is not necessary. So um, I think we're left with uh, the in stack data being essentially stuff that you want close at hand stuff that you want to be able to process uh, quickly uh, and actions that you want to take that um, every node uh, along the path should be taking. And in the PSD, you put stuff also, <clears throat> um, Loa was pushing in terms of having the in-stack data also be very concise. So the in-stack data um, per flag may be limited to four bytes or one label value. So effectively um, in the current schema, and that's 30 bits. Whereas post stack data, if you have a TLV structure, you could say, oh, this particular post stack data is, you know, 16 bytes or, you know, 50 bytes or whatever you want, because you have a, you have a length field. So, uh, so that's kind of the distinction we're looking at for in stack data versus post stack data. Um, essentially the in-stack data being data that you want close at hand, data that is uh, encoded 
fairly uh, parsimoniously and data that uh, every hop will be processing. Whereas post act data will be data that uh, could uh, take more effort to get to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, could uh, require more processing and could be of a greater length. So uh, if you have uh, like the IOM stuff could be, you know, run into tens of bytes, um, that's uh, suitable for post post act data. Does that make sense to folks? Um, uh, Kiriti, I have a question, uh, please, on on this. Uh, so, so we 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 talked about actions that uh, require in stack data, and some actions requiring uh, post stack data, but there could be some actions that require both uh, possible, right? Like uh, some minimal data in stack, and then extended data post stack. And do you, do you see this is possible or uh, should we think about that? So uh, it's definitely possible, but I would, I would think of it then as saying, <clears throat> let's split that into the in stack stuff and the post stack stuff, and then we'll have the bit. Um, and, you know, we also had a discussion about the, what was initially just the H bit, which was a hop by hop bit. <clears throat> but then um, Loa said, how do we know that there is post stack data, uh, even if it is end to end? So we might end up with two bits, but essentially you have uh, either one bit or two bits that says there is post stack data, which needs to be processed hop by hop. There is post stack data that needs to be processed uh, by the egress, by the end nodes. <clears throat> and in that case, uh, in the case that you mentioned, you might say, I have a very simple let's let's just take IOM and I'm just throwing up an example. Maybe it's an ID. Uh, an ID that's oh, it's in an stack. ID. Uh, ready. Uh, yeah. actually um I have a question about um an example of IOM being in stack data, if I understand correctly. So uh, today we we'll think of IOM being a post stack, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay, if, if it's post stack, because um, I have a uh, concern that because of um, IAM trace options, so that where their telemetry information is added uh, after their IAM header, uh, probably uh, putting IAM into their in stack data is unadvisable. Right, no, I am with you. And, okay. and so my okay. current push is that we put that in because the other thing is IOM data is also runs into many, many bytes. Um, typically what we're looking at for in stack data is for each flag, um, you have four bytes. Um, you might have eight bytes, but, but beyond that, um, it really starts getting unwieldy uh, in the label stack because now the label stack just keeps growing. So um, my push is that the IOM data should be in <clears throat> post stack. Um, so, and especially yeah. as you said, it could grow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you. Kriti, I, I have a question. Um, why, why do you think uh, uh, the in-stack data would be uh, processed faster? Because you don't have to go to the end of stack? Um, I have a... You know, explained many times that that uh, you, you know, just for the from the parsing perspective, the difference is negligible. As uh, uh, all the um, um, you know, uh, that con what contribute to the uh, performance is uh, the actual uh, processing complexity uh, for each application. So it doesn't uh, matter. Uh, it's a in stack or post stack. It's just the nature of the header. What is required? So, That's it. So if you only consider it uh, appears earlier, you know you can find it uh, sooner. That doesn't matter. Um, so that may be the case for your ASICs. You can't speak for everyone. I can tell you that I've spoken uh, I, with I, our ASIC I can engineer speak from the processor, network processor, and the ASIC. Uh, it's supposed to most part, you know, as, as as far as I so, know. So if you if you I, let me speak, our ASICs have a difference. 
so the, we have a we have some ASICs that will process it the same for both. Uh, I won't say it's the same, but there's a relatively low overhead to go to the end of stack, and for some ASICs there's a higher overhead. So I I don't agree with what you just said. We have ASICs that um, there is an overhead to go to the bottom of stack. Yeah, I I I like to I I can show some analysis from my side, but I'd also like to see uh, some in depth analysis from your side. Maybe you just show why I, because I don't understand why uh, based on my knowledge of the packet processing. I have a clarification question. Maybe it will help in uh, this discussion. Uh, the in stack data, the, the post stack data, we are proposing that it will be a, a TLV type of encoding uh, and parsing will be required uh, to understand uh, uh, each uh, each uh, type of post stack data. Uh, it, it, for the in stack data, um, the way I understand Kiriti and correct me, uh, they, it's a raw encoding uh, that is uh, proposed. There is no type length value. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, but uh, that is correct. Yeah, but yeah. not um, necessarily like that um, because uh, we can just uh, uh, use a uh, uh, header chains to do that. So, so you 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 don't need to uh, go into a header then to understand the internal um, structure. It's just uh, you can uh, understand what's the next header uh, as this header. Then you just uh, uh, yeah, but. but well, you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you use next header or a TLV structure. Um, essentially, yep. you're still doing a TLV. The type may be in the previous uh, uh, header, or it might be in the current header. That's the only difference that I see between a TLV and a next header structure. But there's definitely much more parsing to do. The but, no, no, data no, no, is, no, 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 no. Can, 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 can I finish? Can you, yeah. Uh, the in stack data, as um, uh, Tarek just pointed out, has a very parsimonious structure. So you're trying to capture a lot more information with much less bits, uh, much less uh, you know uh, data. So, for example, if you have a bit that says you know the next word is the entropy label, and a bit that says the next word uh, after that is the uh, uh, slice identifier, you're basically saying that the parsing is limited to very simple, you know, you just look at the bit and say, yes, there's the entropy label, yes, there is a, a slice header, and you know the format. I, there is no parsing of TLVs. Yeah, it, essentially, it's still TLV. The bits is a type, and the, you, the, the length might be inherent in the node. And the value is what follows the, the label, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and uh, from the parser point of view, again, I in there's no difference. You 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 need to spend the same amount of time to to parse it, even if it's a bit or a byte or some you know some some type words in somewhere. No difference. So. I don't disagree with you. I think um, what you're saying that um, the 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 bit essentially encodes the type. Uh, it's a it, but it's a very much more um, compressed encoding than than saying you know parse a, a one byte TLV or a, uh, the type or a two byte type. Um, and so from from my discussions with our ASIC team and with the Broadcom team. Um, this particular structure is uh, easy to parse and is very space efficient. Um, and it's close to the top of stack. Uh, I, I think one really big problem is that if you have, um, you know, a very big stack because of uh, segment routing, um, you could, you could, you could have a hard time getting to the bottom of stack to find the post stack data. Um, I know that that's the case for some of our ASICs, or that's the case with some of the Broadcom ASICs. So, from what, um, 
I think what you're trying to argue is that we don't need anything in stack. The reality is that we do have things in stack already. I mean, the, uh, yeah. Um, yes. My my point is that uh, no, I agree that if you use a bit to indicate the type, this is it more efficient than you know the other uh, method. Um, but my my point is. Uh, if you still need a, a few uh, other uh, data uh, bytes of data, follow this uh, label, um, uh, uh, this flag, then why don't just put it post stack? Uh, in, in, from my point of view, there's no difference in performance. And also, from your you point make, of view, there's you no make, difference. Uh, from my point of view, there is uh, a difference. Yeah, so. you make the uh, label stack more cleaner. I, you know, because. Uh, Otherwise, you will uh, keep adding, uh, you know, different um, you know, semantics to the uh, label stack. Uh, to me, that's not a clean line. And of course, you, uh, you also argue there's already some some uh, use cases for that, like the uh, entropy label. But uh, yeah, that we can accept that uh, as a. Uh, the status quo, but uh, um, oh, I, in my point of view, I, we shouldn't continue uh, on that trend. That's uh, that's why we actually uh, try to find new ways to support this uh, uh, in network services. Um, otherwise, we will just uh, continue to make it, um, you know, um, um, you know, more messy. In my point of view, uh, to just keep adding things to the label stack. So uh, we have a well-defined thing that is called special purpose labels. And the special purpose labels have different semantics. That's already the case that was in the original architecture. The fact that the special purpose label may have data associated with it or may not have data with, associated with it um, is, uh, is something that um, we already have uh, gone through. And we said for certain things, you do want extra data. So. The the fact that this is messy, um, I, I you know I have to disagree. Yes, with you. we we all that, think that's unsustainable, right? So we continue to rely on that way. That's why we um, trying to uh, find. So new you're making two things. statements. If, if we have new new ways to do things, why we just, you know just keep uh, the you know the both the old way and the new way? Why we why we don't just okay. uh, by the best. You've made two statements. You've made two statements that I don't agree with. One is you're saying this is messy. I don't agree. I think we, you know, there's a very clean way of processing this. And two is that there is no difference between, or very little difference between processing things in stack and the end of, end of stack. <clears throat> and I already said that for our ASICs, there is a difference between the two. And I don't know how many times I have to say this. There is a value to doing it this way. Um, if the if the MPLS group says we don't want to do it this way, that's fine. But uh, you mm -hmm. cannot tell me what my ASICs do and how my ASICs work. Your ASICs is your ASICs, and you can make statements about your ASICs. You cannot make statements about my ASICs. Um, I, I think we 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 want to gather uh, more input from multiple vendors. That was the agreement, and by you, I uh, you know we've heard your opinion and purity as well. Um, um, yeah, I, I, it's recorded. I, I think it's, that's fine. We will, uh, eventually make a consensus call within the design team on this. And, um, yeah, um, that's the stand of the MPLS working group, uh, chairs. Uh, hi, Kriti. Yeah. I have one question about uh, the ink stack data. Uh, as yep. you mentioned that, uh, you want to use it mainly for the hub by hub. A behavior, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and yeah. Um, my question is, uh, where will be the position of this in stack data if you want to keep it for the hub by hub processing? You need close to the top label or closer to the bottom stack? So the idea is that it is, should be close to the top label, but the problem is when you're doing um, segment routing. If, so if you're doing things like LDP or RSCPTE, um, you know, you're swapping labels, then the top label stays the same. I mean, it changes value, but it stays the same position. But as you start popping labels, which is a problem that you have with um, segment routing, uh, we have this discussion about 
how to do segment routing with entropy labels, um, you come to the point where you pop the label and say, oh, the next label is entropy label indicator. So I have to pop that. So one idea is that you, you put the uh, in-stack data near the top uh, so that this idea of a readable stack depth. So if the readable stack depth is five, then you put it within the top five labels. And then after that, you uh, repeat it further down the stack. So maybe every five labels, you, you repeat the, um, the, enter, uh, the, I mean, this is the suggestion we had with entropy label. So you could do the same thing with in-stack data. Um, so that way, if you're, if you're more of a popping label uh, operation, then you pop the labels, you come to the uh, indicator that says, I've got in-stack data, and then you pop the whole in-stack data, and then you continue processing because you know that there's another copy, you know, five labels below that. Um, but, um, you know, if you put it close to the bottom of the stack, then the advantages of having it be in stack are reduced because you still have to pass uh, through the, the label stack to find the in stack data. So it's not an easy uh, situation, especially when you have label popping. Does that right, answer yeah. your question? Yeah, this is uh, yeah, also my concern about this uh, mechanism. Uh, but if you put it, uh, if it is not on the at the top of the label stack, how can you tell the each hub to process it? It is not uh, the topmost label for each hub, right? It's you not the top the special most, purpose. In fact, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. Uh, yeah. There, there is an issue. Uh, entropy label works because you have the indicator and the data as a unit. If we want to do the yeah. same thing here, then we're going to have to have the actions and the ancillary data multiple times in the stack. Yes. Yeah, if you uh, want to hub, hub hub processing, it means you need to repeat it uh, for each hub. Otherwise, to, not necessarily uh, each hop. Um, you have to repeat it um, at the label depth that each hop can process. So if a, if a hop says I can process five labels deep, then you can put it up to five labels deep. If the hop says I can process up to ten labels deep, you can put it every ten labels. If a if a if a uh, well, hop says it, I can only process two labels deep, then that becomes a problem. Except that. In that calculation, you have to include the length of the action indicator as well as the length of the ancillary data. It depends on what. Uh, so today, readable stack depth says I can read up to that depth. And so, if you read up to that depth, if you say um, when I look at the fifth label, uh, uh, you know, counting the top of stack as one, if I go to five, and I see that that is an indicator that says. I've got uh, in stack data. Um, the question is, does I can read five labels include um, all the data that goes with it, or does it include just, oh, I saw that uh, indicator and now I, I, I will process further. So you're right. If, if the readable stack app is, this is all I can read off the label stack, then it would have to include that. And if the readable stack depth is um, this is um, this is how far I can look to find an indicator, and then if I find an indicator, I can process something beyond that, then 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 you have a little more flexibility. There is always a problem that even when you find the indicator, you may not have processing cycles to say I'm going to look at the entropy level and do the required you know, hash computation. I'm going to look at the slice indicator, then look at, you know, what what do I need to do in forwarding? I'm going to then look at, you know, whatever other bits there are and say, I'm going to do that. So same as if you look at the issues that people are having with hop by hop processing of IPv6, um, you could have 20 hop by hop headers in the IPv6 packet, but they say you might only be able to process two or three of them. And so here you might have lots of uh, bits and lots of data 
in the Instack header. Whether you can read them or not, you may not be able to process them because each bit and the associated data will take cycles. And by processing it, you might um, reach your budget of processing time for this particular packet. And if you continue processing, you'll have to drop other packets. Yeah, I think this is something we need to consider more. Yeah. I, for I, sure, yeah. One question, um, uh, Kiriti, I think it's related to what you're saying. Uh, um, some some hardware would um, have a, uh, a budget, like you said, uh, in processing the packet in the first pass. And if, if further uh, processing is required, they would recycle the packet versus dropping it. And that, you know, puts the throughput a little bit uh, lower. Uh, the throughput, case, yeah. Right? And um, this is why, uh, you know, keeping it closer in the label stack, uh, you know, maybe it will uh, avoid having these uh, recycling uh, of packets. Um, um, that, and that's one thing. No, excellent point. And, and, and I think the other thing is, even if you, are, I mean, because now we have the extension header, you could have 10 bits set in the, in the, uh, actions indicator. So you might end up with a situation where I can only parse five of them and act on five of them in one cycle. Uh, and then I have to push it back, but I can do all the 10 in two cycles. Whereas if you say, I'm going to put it at the bottom of the stack and I'm going to have more processing for it. Uh, it might be that, um, you, you know, you'd have to spend three or four, three or four loops around the, the packet processing. I think those are all uh, important questions um, and they will vary from hardware to hardware. But I think the high order bit uh, is that the hop by hop processing of uh, options, whether it's an IPv6 or whether it is an MPLS, this is a very important question where in IPv6 they're saying, you don't have to process more than, I don't know, I think they picked a number like two, but I think that's up for discussion. And they're also saying you need to put the hop by hop processing in a particular order, uh, hop by hop options, so that the most important will be first and you do that and then you do the next one. And then uh, maybe you have to say, okay, I can't do any more. Or maybe as you said, you can recycle the packet. But all of those um, are decisions that both the MPLS uh, and the IPv6 um, uh, design teams have to look at so that we don't end up with something that's not implementable in the hardware. Okay. So, yeah. um, so that's essentially where we're at. Um, I, I think, um, you know, I understand uh, how you use uh, discussion that maybe we should put everything in in the post stack data. I think the value of being being able to say we can put something in the in stack data. Um, there's no reason why you have to use that option. If you got uh, hardware that says I don't care where it is, then you can say um, the only thing I put in the indicator is go look at post stack data and you can put everything there, that's perfectly fine. Um, the, the problem is that all the, uh, the routers in the path should be uh, able to say, I can process that. And I don't care if that is 10 labels deep, 20 labels deep, 50 labels deep. Um, for other routers, you might want to say, uh, yeah, there's an option of putting at least some, I don't want to put everything uh, having two options, either it's in stack or post stack, but the, the things that you do uh, um, have a definition to be in stack, um, you can put that in stack for those routers that say, I prefer it to be in stack or I need it to be in stack because I can't look post stack. So that's kind of uh, where we're at. Um, I think, um, you know, one of the things I will do is update the FAI document um, I've been saying this for a couple of um, sessions, but um, now that we have this uh, discussion, I can incorporate this tax plus, uh, you know, the, the stuff that we discussed at the MPLS uh, meeting at the last IETF. 
and uh, come up with a new version of the document. And then we can revisit this and, and decide whether we have the right phrasing for how you distinguish between what data makes sense to put in stack and what data makes sense to put, or what data must go post stack. So um, to, I think it was Greg's point, uh, you don't want to put the IOM stuff uh, in stack. Kiriti, will you be proposing the uh, encoding of post stack data? Um, I think we had rough idea, but um, are you going to propose something about the encoding? Um, yeah, uh, so I, I want to propose at least um, <clears throat> what the header will look like, because that also follows from the MFN uh, draft that um, that we have out there, the, the uh, MPLS first enable. So essentially the first enable encodes what is the PSD, and in a, in a way what we're doing is saying it has the old stuff because um, the MFN of zero and one, we already have some definitions for, so we won't reuse those. Um, so that would be a dead net uh, control word or a pseudo wire control word or an, uh, pseudo wire OAM data, uh, or there's uh, gal cache, there's beers. There's, so there's a bunch of things there. Um, we will use a new code point for post stack data that is MIAD style post stack data. And for that, um, at least, like I said, the header will say, um, yeah, this is the MFN value, this is the length of the, of the post act uh, data, and then the, the details of uh, whether you want to use a TLV structure or a next header structure, you know, I, I'm okay you know, with uh, anyone proposing that. But I do want to say that because, you know, from the, uh, indicators you you point down and say there is post stack data. Uh, so so there is a question that uh, Loa had, uh, which is on this uh, this uh, this page here. Uh, the PSD needs to be self descriptive. Uh, is it true? What does it mean? The the bottom of this uh, agenda. Uh, and, and so I would like that the PSD be self descriptive in the sense that it has a TLV structure. Uh, whether it's a next header structure or a TLV structure, and get that much defined, and then the details of you know how the IOM is laid out and how um, any other uh, post act data is laid out, um, you know everyone can propose their own thing and you know grab a type field and um, you know we, we we need an IANA for the type field for that, but for the the uh, to your to your question, for the PSD header that uh, describes the that the fact that you have a PSD that uh, distinguishes between DeadNet control word and Mia style PSD and Galgash, um, just that header I would like to define it. I I can have a proposal for that, and then uh, we can discuss that. Okay, thank you. And that takes me to the directive. So if you have a, a second, let me, um, can you guys see the directive, the design directives? Yes, I can. We can. I yeah. can. Um, so I think the, the current directive is uh, reasonable. Uh, I made two changes. One is um, it said something like, uh, and you can look at the history, uh, they must be at most, no, uh, the following uh, cannot, must not occur simultaneously. And it said PSD uh, and uh, uh, death net control word and ACH. Um, I just changed that so that I think it's a little uh, clearer. At most one of the new style PSD, pseudo wire control word, death net control word, um, I, I should have another thing here, or ACH may be present after the label whose bottom of stack bit is set. And then um, the other thing I would I think is useful adding is any changes in the format of the process in the format or processing of the gal gash uh, pseudo wire control word dead net control word uh, must be made in the context of the new PSD format. Uh, hopefully that's clear. But essentially, if you want to update gal gash processing, don't touch the existing gal gash. 
uh, introduced a new PSD type, which is the uh, equ equivalent of the associate, associated channel, and um, make the changes there. So don't touch existing Galgash. Um, one clarification question, Kiriti. So <clears throat> if I wanted to do sudo y control word with new style PSD, um, I should be able to have it as a um, sub TLV within the PSD, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and so, yeah, maybe this last thing I should uh, say it a little or, clearly. Um, yeah. What I'm hinting to is the first part of the sentence. Um, did you mean old old style or existing uh, um, pseudo wire control word uh, that not control? So, or, or yeah, how do you? Good... Yeah, maybe the, you yeah. will define a new way and an old way. And right, oh. right. So, because uh, and this directive, um, I um, I have left this intact, and I think these words were from Loa. So it says, you know. RFC 84, uh, 8964 will not be changed. MPLS generic associated channel will not be changed. So basically it says existing specifications and implementations for all of these things will continue to operate as specified. So to your point, if I A, want to have Galgash or, or pseudo I control word plus uh, new style PSD, I have to make that a new TLV within the PSD, uh, within the new style PSD. And if what I want to make changes for it, I definitely would have to do that. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I meant, do we call this, what do we call that uh, in, in this case? The pseudo wire control word that is sitting inside PSD. Is it the same name or we come up with a no style? I, I think we should have a new name. It will have a new TLV number. See, currently, I know that there's a pseudo wire control word by by signaling. So my signaling, my pseudo I signaling says, hey, I'm using a control word. And you know, both ends agree, so there's going to be a control word. Um, and then when I parse it, you know, we put zero or one, but I have to know whether it's a definite control word or a pseudo I control word. That's all from signaling. If you put it into the PSD, and uh, this is what I mean by self-describing, I don't have to refer back to the control plane to understand is this a DetNet control word? Is this a pseudo I control word? Is there a control word? Yes or no? Today, we rely on the control plane to know that. But okay. to your point, um, I think we should have a new word. So okay. I will uh, well, take these words a few, a little bit more. You really, uh, if I may. Um, so a yeah. uh, couple notes I, I want to clarify. Um, so for the uh, DetNet um, control word, Yes, it uses the same nibble as a uh, uh, pseudo wire control word, but yep. uh, the only difference is the, the sequence number. So if the node does not use a sequence number, is not doesn't uh, has a pre of function that uh, uses the sequence number, then it's uh, no, no, no operation. It's transparent. Uh, for the, no, but uh, the sequence numbers are different lengths in the two. So the pseudo wire control word can also have a sequence number, but it's 16 bits, and the dead net is 24 bits, if I remember oh, right. Oh, oh, you, you, you mean for uh, set up um, pseudo wires? Yes, yeah. I see. So the problem, so the, the way that I've been told that this is, uh, you distinguish them is in the control plane. So if I'm doing pseudo wire signaling, um, then I'm using pseudo wire style control. And I say I'm using control word, uh, pseudo wire style control word. If I'm doing dead net signaling, it's a dead net style control word. Uh, well, I would say then, well, then um, uh, we are using Okay, I'll need to look at it. Uh, what's what's being uh, um, signaled? Because effectively, what we've done is we took um, um, control word. Uh, the thing is that Ethernet doesn't use the sequence number, so we used only this space uh, for um, sequence number. So it's a uh, yeah, yeah. fully compatible uh, with the control word that is used for Ethernet to the wires. Uh, no, because I think um, the if 
you're right. Um, most people don't use the uh, sequence number, but the defined sequence number is 16 bits for pseudo wires. And it's, uh, it's 24 bits or 28 bits for DetNet. Okay. So uh, the format uh, I, I, the 32 bits is very different. Okay, I, I, I'll probably let's take it to the mailing list. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my question was for um, uh, Gail Gash and creating uh, optional um, other alternative uh, mechanism uh, to do that. Um, so uh, Gail uh, is um, used for uh, or first nibble uh, used to indicate uh, OEM control channel. So if yeah. somebody wants to have a new function in uh, OEM control channel, um, so as you suggested, they can use a, a new mechanism and create a new uh, channel type. Right, right, yeah. Uh, if, what happens if, well, then uh, it would not be supported using GAL because if somebody uh, realizes the new uh, channel type under their GAL, indicated by Gale, then they don't support this channel type and they just throw it away. Right. So the, the thing here, what it says is the existing specification and implementation for Gale Gash uh, continue to operate as specified. So if you take that very literally, and you also take the fact that you can't have Gale Gash and the new style PSD, then if you want to make changes to, if you want a new uh, control channel type, uh, sorry, um, uh, associated channel type, um, you would then say, okay, I have a new TLV in the PSD, which is an associated channel. And in that I could use the old types, but I could introduce a new type that says, this is my new uh, channel type. So I think it follows from, from the existing statements, mm -hmm. so I'm just making it more explicit. Uh, of course, we should all agree that this is the direction we want, but um, all, all I'm doing is looking at this current uh, design directive and saying, okay, if somebody wants to make a change, um, we don't want to touch the existing gal gash, um, then you have to make a, a new subtype of this PSD to be associated channel. Okay, uh, just a question about uh, would we, you think that we use the same registry of pseudo-wire uh, channel types? Uh, we could, we could. I would think we that, want... that seems to be safer. Uh, uh, do you mean for newer channels or for- Yes, for newer channels, yeah, for new channels. New channels. So that means, um, okay, we. When we as assign a new uh, associate channel, uh, does it need to be supported using the classic way with a gal and with the uh, with the FAI uh, way, or, uh, or 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 only with the FAI way? If we use if we use uh, the same uh, word, so after the first nibble, uh, then it, I think it's better to use the same registry. If it's right. uh, absolutely uses absolutely different mechanism uh, with the nibble, um, first nibble, then doesn't have to. Better not to be. Depends. So, um, to, to, your, to your question, I think it would be nice to, I mean, to, to uh, you know, I agree with Greg. And I think what essentially, um, even if we don't update Gal Gash and we don't have a new type of channel uh, or whatever, it would be nice to say there's a path whereby someone who's implemented Gal Gash can move to using uh, the MIAD style PSD. And so instead of putting a Gal in the stack, uh, you put uh, an indicator that says there is post stack data, you go to the post stack data. You pass it. Say, oh, there's a ga there's a uh, associated channel, and then you use the same code points as you have before. So it gives a migration path for people who are using Gal Gash to move to the new style MIAD, right? And once they do that, then what Greg said, you can now add new types there, and you can have a new type of channel. So I think by 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 reusing the registry, um, you're in a position where um, you you give them a migration path from Galgash to MIAD, 
and then you can say, oh, and now you can also have new ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the example of encoding uh, where we have a, a, an ash inside the PSD. Yeah, um, uh, Greg, you and, you and I can uh, talk offline on that. Sure. Thank you. Cool. Okay. So I think I'm done. I'll turn this back to you. Um, um, Pat. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kiriti. Thanks uh, on the good discussion. Um, on the agenda, I think we went over all, um, all the items that uh, we had on the agenda. And uh, in fact, I also have a conflict in five minutes. So if we don't have any other things to talk about, you know, I, we can stop uh, uh, at the top of the hour in five minutes, or even now if there's no other questions. Uh, so I'll leave it up to the attendees uh, if you want to add anything on the agenda. Mm. So, so um, I, I will drop off, um, but um, okay. Greg, I will send you a note offline and we can um, talk about how to update Galgash. We can also resolve uh, the dead net and uh, sort of our control words. And then yeah. we can reflect that in in this directive. Okay. Great. Okay, thank Kiriti, you. Before before you I lose you. Just the last uh, uh, statement here. Do we need to add anything to the requirements document in terms of the uh, in stack da uh, uh, data ver uh, versus po uh, post stack data? Um, I mean, maybe maybe we should uh, tackle that uh, next. Is does it does it go as a requirement? Anything that you should you think should be added in the requirements document? That's a good question. Um, let me think about it. And if I have anything, I will send um, Stuart and um, Matthew a note or, or I'll update the GitHub. Okay. Okay. We can discuss it. Um, I guess what Matthew said is that we will discuss the requirements in two weeks um, or in January, let's talk in January. Okay. I need to link up with with Stuart if that's okay. Um, and I know he's away on vacation this week. Um, so okay, so, is, is that okay? Because uh, then I'm going away as well. Um, so what I'll do is before the end of the year, I will uh, update um, the GitHub with um, any requirements that I think is worth putting in with respect to uh, ISD and PSD. And, and then we can discuss it in the meeting uh, whenever we do it in January. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank yeah. yeah. And, and I'll, I'll try and find a way to import the, the comments that we, um, that we received via email as well. Okay, but I'll, I'll try to do mine directly and GitHub if I can figure out how. All right. Thank you. Okay. All so, right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And uh, because uh, looks like we don't have any items to be added in the agenda, I'll I'll uh, give you back the remaining time. Uh, uh, thanks all for attending. Cheers.